This will be our eighth exposition of the Gospel of John. We're going to be in the first chapter, verse 18 tonight. Tim. This is a very, a very significant verse, and uh, it's one I'm afraid that has been corrupted by some translators and some expositors. Thank you. Now, I wanted to say before we begin on this that no person can afford to have an erroneous view of God or Christ. Now, this is important to know this. Freedom of opinion be hanged. There's no, there's no, when it comes to the kingdom of God, nobody's free to be wrong. Having said that, you know, not many people believe this. But you can't be wrong about God, anything about God. And you can't be wrong about anything about Christ. Why? Because knowing God and Jesus Christ is eternal life. That's John 17, 3. So, you, <laughs> so you're fooling around with, the, with eternal life Amen. when you get to commenting about God. So if you're wrong, guess where you stand yeah. when it comes to eternal life. Yeah. That means what you know is not right, yeah. which means you don't have eternal life. See, it's, it's, that, it's that serious of a matter. There are those who acknowledge that there is a God. Well, isn't that wonderful? But they're not willing to hear him and not willing to obey him. So we're not even interested in their acknowledgement. It doesn't amount to anything. It's not, it's not honored in heaven. There are some people who believe there's Christ. They believe in Christ, but they, they're not willing to live for him. Hmm? They're not willing to forsake all for them. So they're just words. They're just giving words. They don't amount to anything. I'm accenting that you've got to be right about God and about Christ. <clears throat> now, God has spoken on this issue about himself. So there's to be no question about it. And I'll, I'll give you some of these things that God has said. Now, these are things God has said. He said, uh, I'm the first. I am the last. Beside me, there's no God. Allah included. Amen. Again, he said, is, is there a God beside me? <laughs> Yea, I, I know not any. And he's omniscient. That's right. Here's another. Isaiah 45, 5. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. There's no Who are you trying to serve? There is no God beside me. Who do you trust in? There is no God beside me. Amen. Here's again. There is none beside me. Isaiah 45, 6. Here's another. There is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. There's no Savior beside me. Hosea 12, 4. Well, see, that's uh, pretty plain, isn't it? 13, uh, Hosea 13, 4. That's pretty plain, isn't it? How dare anybody live their life without taking God into consideration? How dare anybody do that? See, I feel so sorry for them. I'm afraid for them. I don't feel sorry for them. You say, why don't you? Because they're stupid. God put himself under their nose, written his name all over creation, sent out the gospel, sent his son, preaching all over the place, sent the word of God. They don't believe in God? God's deprived them of wisdom, just like he did the ostrich. See, you can't mess around with the knowledge of God. You can't... A person can't act like they're so sincere and so holy. I'm trying to find God. These people are not telling the truth. Right. Now, through John, the Lord now shows us that you cannot consider Jesus Christ without considering God the Father. That's what we're going to we're going to tackle tonight. 
The two of them go together. You can't like just talk about God and leave Christ out. And you can't talk about Christ and leave God out. Yeah, can't do that. So our, our verse is verse 18. <clears throat> no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Yeah. Oh boy, this is a. <laughs> If you like challenging thoughts, well, we got them tonight. Here you are. No man <coughs> has seen God at any time. All right, that's that's uh, that's the affirmation. Don't say yeah, but. That's the affirmation. Don't say well, what about? That's the affirmation. No man. That's what we're going to expound. See God. God doesn't give anyone the right to like question his existence just because you can't see him. That doesn't mean he's not there. And no one's ever seen him. No one can attest, I saw God and I, I know for sure. No, nobody can say that. No, no descendant of Adam. No man has a right to an opinion. <laughs> about God. Now I wish all preachers knew this, but but they don't. I wish they knew this, that when you spout an opinion, it better not be about God. Am I right? When you give an opinion, it better not be about Christ. You may give an opinion about me or somebody else, but you cannot do that about God and Christ. As a purposeful creation of God, which man is, he's a creation on purpose. He's not an accident. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. But the evolutionist thinks man's like an accident, a quirk that happened in nature. Is that serious? Oh, yes, that's very serious. That's very serious. You got a wrong view of God, you got a wrong view of man, you got a wrong view of the world, you got a wrong view of creation. Oh, boy, that's a bad state to be in, believe me. Yes. The origin behind that full thinking anyway is, well, if God didn't do it, this is how it would have had to have happened. Yeah. That's how that they came up with that. Yeah, well they don't believe God did it. That's what yeah, they that's came what I mean. Yeah, I said, that's what no they God, came up this with. This is how it happened. Yeah. yeah. Now as a as a purposeful creation of God, no man has a moral or a spiritual license to live like there was no God. You may cry about him may break your heart about them, but they are trespassers. They have contradicted their own conscience and ignored the evidence in creation. No one has a right to live, and you'd be surprised how many Christians, professing Christians, live just like there was no God. When it comes to the Lord's day, they do their own thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm? Oh yeah, they do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And God has spoken on it. If you don't know, you just need to yeah. find it in Scripture about doing your will on His day. He's spoken on that matter. <laughs> Some have said that they don't worship idols, but they have intellectual gods. They have a they have their idea about who God is. So they say something like, God loves everybody the same. You better make sure that's right. Yeah, that's, right, right. Oh, yeah. that's going to be assessed on the Day of Judgment. The, the nut case that came up with that statement, mm -hmm. that's going to be assessed on the Day of Judgment. Does God love everybody the same? Mm -hmm. Like the apostles? Do you love them as much as Herod? See, these things, 
that's another God. See, it's not that they have a misconception of God. That's another God. That's not even the true God. Same goes with Jesus. There's another Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11, 4, another Jesus. There isn't really Jesus. Jesus said there's false Christs. Some, some are self-proclaimed. Some are proclaimed by other people. But they're not... They're not really Christ. Yes. On this subject, it occurred to me one reason why it is such a heinous lie that all ways lead in the same place. Yeah, and God right. is real. The true God is really in yeah. every religion because it does away with the truth the, and the fact that there are, in fact, idols uh -huh. out there. Mm -hmm. People yes, can't even think in terms of idols and truth what is legitimate and what is illegitimate That's right. mm -hmm. because they uh, our our generation is accepting the slide that God is in everything but God uh -huh. has made it clear he's not, not in everything, everything and he isn't uh -huh. everything John in closing his first epistle he said the son of god we know the son of god is come and has given us an understanding that we might know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. The next sentence says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. He wasn't talking about statues. He was talking about ideas. There are ideas floating around about God. It's not really God. Now, of late, of re recent years, I've I've kind of fastened on this because this has been a burden for a good many years to me. There's evidence that a person, ha whether whether a, the real Jesus is living in a person or not, whether the real Spirit is living in a person or not. Yeah, the fruit of the Spirit. See? They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh to get the affections and lusts. Galatians 5:24. Wherever the things that Jesus produces aren't present, he's absent. That's why they're not present. See, that's why they're not present. Jesus doesn't dwell in anybody and sit on a chair. He's a prodigious worker. Just like God, he said, my father works and I work. He's a prodigious worker. So where his work is not being done, he's not in the house. It's just, well, I don't want to pursue that anymore. That's, that's enough. Now, we know by inspiration that those that come to God must believe that he is. So it's none of this stuff, oh, God, if there is a God, you know. <laughs> There's t testimonies like this. They didn't happen when I was a young man. You didn't hear testimonies like this, but... In the past few decades, you hear that someone's like, oh, God, if you're real, manifest yourself to me. The question, if you're real, voided the prayer. The prayer just, was just words puffed out into the air. God not going to pay attention to him. He that comes in, he must believe that he is and, and, that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Why don't people live for God? They don't believe he's a rewarder. That's, right. That's the truth of the matter. See, some people aren't willing to say that, but I'm at the age that doesn't make a difference with the pe what people say about me. That's the truth of the matter. Amen. This is being addressed in our, uh, in our text. No man has seen God at any time. So the only thing you know about God is what God's let leaked out. That's right, yes. What God's revealed about himself, that's it. That's all, that's all information we got. Uh -huh. You can't conclude it from anything you see. Right. Not at all. This is, goes hand in hand with what you said about an opinion about God. See, it, it would be one thing if he hadn't revealed anything. But he has revealed himself, and he expects to be... Uh, spoken of 
in accordance with what he's revealed. That's right. And mm -hmm. that, so that's what makes it such a, a terrible thing. In other words, you're making up something. Now, we all know that we don't want people making up things about us. It's not, it's not right. And, but see, when you're talking about God, you're talking about an ultimate reality. That's right. The, the person. <laughs> Yeah, it goes without saying that the only the only information the only information we have about God is in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. We we, we don't have any any other. That's that's a sum total of our information. Yes, yeah, Sister Ada. Such a blessing and refreshment when we meet up with people who, as they express what what they believe, we find out maybe we found their understanding wasn't all that clear, and just by putting a scripture out there saying the pure word uh -huh. when we find those who are able to just take hold of it they don't question it they say oh okay i i believe that that opens up my eyes it is yes. such a refreshment amen yes it is to meet amen. people uh -huh. that you yes, can see is. the lord working and that's what faith will do as mm -hmm. soon as the lord points in that you know, yeah makes himself shine yes you say oh that I, I can see that that's him and take hold of it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I wanted to say it. I, I generally don't face it. It's hard for me to turn this way, but if you want to participate, just holler out. <laughs> so, yeah, and you jump in here. No man at any time, no human eye, no man has seen God at any time. No man. They've ever seen God at any time. Some of the other versions tail in this verse say, no one has ever seen God. No one has actually seen God. No one has ever seen deity. No one's ever seen the, seen the Father. The, Lord, the exalted Christ is spoken of as whom no man has seen or can see. And it, God twice is called invisible. Invisible to humanity. Invisible. At any time. No one's ever seen God at any time. There was not a special occasion where a special person got a special glimpse at any, at any time. The Message Bible says, not even a glimpse, not so much as a glimpse. Now the unlearned will object. Just see, but it says some people saw God. All right, it does. We're going to deal, I'm going to deal with that. For instance, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel, all together at one time, it says, Exodus 24, 10, they saw the God of Israel. You have the unlearned, there you are, there you are, contradiction. Yeah. Let's take some more. It's also said of the nobles of Israel, the nobles of the children of Israel, also they saw God and did eat and drink as they survived. Yeah. Yeah. Micaiah the prophet says, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. First King 22, 19, uh, 19. Amos said in Amos 9, 1, I saw the Lord. Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord sitting on his throne high and lifted up. Yeah. Isaiah 6, 1. Then when the glorified Christ appeared to John in the Isle of Patmos, it said, when I saw him, Of course, this also must take into account Moses, Moses whom, of whom it is said, he endured as seen as, as, as. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. I don't know, what do you do with texts like that? There's some people argue about it. No. What they saw was the glory of God. Not the person of God, but the glory of God. Just like Moses God put him in the cliff of the rock, you remember? Yeah, yeah. Then God just walked, speaking as a man, uh -huh. walked past, and it was such glory, yeah. he walked past. And after he passed, some of that glory yeah. lingered, and that's what Moses saw. Yeah. Yeah. It was the glory that he saw. 
Yes, Brother Justin. It's like, uh, like someone shooting up a firework, and you get that little tiny trail. Yeah. Before the firework blows yeah. up. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then someone sees that trail, and they say, that's God. But no, no. No, that, just, that, just that little trail, just the reflection of that little trail. Yeah. They couldn't look at Moses' face. That's how, that's how glory. That's, that's how much right. glory God's got. That's right. Amen. So they they not just saw a por a minuscule portion of His glory. So when He says no man has seen God at any time, He means God as He is in His fullness, without of without something concealing it. That's right. Uh -huh. And His glory actually, as far as men are concerned, the glory of God actually conceals Him, His person. And when they heard a voice, it was the voice of angels, like in the giving of the law, yeah. given by the disposition of angels. Angels are the ones that articulated the law so the people heard it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they spoke for God. Whatever angels said, God has said to say what angels said. Even he personally, <clears throat> well, if you, well, if you were to speak to the earth, it'd melt. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, John 5:37. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. That is, he didn't see an outline <coughs> of a person. God is a spirit to begin with. He doesn't have an outline, you know, but he didn't see anything of God himself, person of God. Now, what does that mean? That means <coughs> that man will not learn of God by a personal revelation to the flesh. God's not going to say like, Brother Tony, I'm sure glad to see you tonight, because I'm going to have this conversation with you. You say, well, he spoke with Moses face to face. Yeah, but it was his, his he, that doesn't mean he, that doesn't mean Moses saw his face. That's not, don't equate that with Moses saw his face. They were talking, he was, they were talking, he knew he was in the presence of God. Oh, this would this would transform the conduct of a lot of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. If they just knew they were in the presence of God, oh, that'll cha that'll change. Mm -hmm. They'll say, "Who art thou, Lord? What do you want me to do?" Uh -huh. Yes. I think you have to see this. You have to see this one phrase, and I know you're going to get to it. But you have to see this one phrase with the next phrase. Oh yes. And because no man has seen God, but yeah, that's right. So what? What he's actually saying is, is that Jesus is a greater revelation right. mm -hmm. than all of those previous revelations. That's right. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. That's exactly it. Yes. Before you move on there, because of the way what God created man to be, there's, there's a sense in which. To the extent we see God, which means understand or know God, mm -hmm. that that's what I mean when I say see mm -hmm. God, we are changed by that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if we're not changed, we haven't seen. That's right. So the, the fact that humanity was not changed, like like the yeah. a person having the indwelling of the Spirit mm -hmm. and that kind of knowledge of God, there were... There were uh, men of old that were godly men but they were still limited in what they knew about God. Mm -hmm. There were things God couldn't reveal to them. They were the kind of person he could but they weren't in the place and time for That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they were they were limited uh, but it even though they were godly in some in many ways, to the extent that they could see, they believed in him, mm -hmm. but they couldn't really, they couldn't really go beyond that point. Mm -hmm. They weren't made perfect without us. No, yeah, man. No, this. See, the thing that caused the problem is, is the gulf that exists between God and man. Yeah. That's what the. That's what the situation is. That God, there's a, there's a very real. It's just not an intellectual gulf. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very real gulf. So you, so the only way we will ever see Him face to face is there can't be anything in us or around us yeah, or about us that's mortal. Yeah, amen. Yeah. You know, see this this image. If you 
Yeah, it, it's it, it's very fascinating. This is a subject you can deal with a lot of ways yes. and for a long time and not exult, mm -hmm. exhaust it. But we we cannot be image him unless we see him. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's we right. can't image what we don't see, mm -hmm. and we're made to be in the image, in the image of God. And we see, and the image yeah. that we see is as stated in Second Corinthians three and four, a reflection, That's right. yeah. as in a mirror. That's yeah. a ref it's a reflected glory yeah. that's seen in the the face of Christ Jesus as he's presented in the gospel. Now we see in a glass darkly. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And you can see that represented in at night you look at the moon. Well basically you're seeing the light from the sun but but you're not you can't look into the sun. I mean no. you can try but you won't be doing yeah. it for long but but I mean, it, it, that you, when you look at the moon, you are getting the benefits from the yep. sun. You're seeing the light, but but it's, it's kind of, yeah, it, it's very <laughs> much shielded. But um, God, what benefit yep. would there be? As long as we're in the flesh, we wouldn't get a benefit. It wouldn't That's be good right. for us to see, see Him face to face. We might see Him for like a split second, but. But that would not be benefit, and that's why he hid Moses. Mary told him, yeah. no man can see me and live. So there was a reason that God did it that way, so it could be beneficial to Moses. See, Same thing with us in Christ. No man has seen God any time. See, God's, God's purpose is to join us to himself. Yes. But this cannot be done within the framework of mortality. Yeah, it cannot be done. God is immortal, and you cannot blend uh -huh immortality and mortality Amen. you see what about Jesus Jesus had to he had to f abandon a lot of stuff yes. just to become a man uh -huh. That's right. he had to lay aside yeah. Yeah. the prerogatives of glory he had to defeat Satan as a man Amen. he didn't quite fight Satan as God mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of fight would that have been <laughs> and and Jesus even in the flesh Jesus was never attacked by the devil or demons. Hands off. Why? Because they saw beyond that, that frame. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And that, that, that's what man's made for. Man's made for this ultimate union with God. But in the pride, the, everyone's going to be raised immortal. Now the task is for your spirit to fit into that body. That's a body can't sin. See, yeah. Amen. that's what we're that that body where He has wrought us. That, that's redemption wrought us for the self same thing, which Second Corinthians five says is the resurrection body. So He's made us to fit into that because in that condition we'll be able to Amen. see Him. We like Him, for we shall see Him as that's He right. is. Yeah. Yeah. All of what we're saying into is a saint yeah. statement. Yeah, that's right. All right, now we now we get to this that Brother Jason mentioned. Uh -huh. This is like uh, all other avenues are shut off, not by law, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but by circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. God is of such a nature; He cannot be seen as He is yeah. by fallen creatures. It, it can't. Yeah. Now, who but God could devise a way to work around this? Yeah. But He did. Yeah. He did through Christ. He worked around this, yeah. so you get the benefits needed to get ready for the grand confrontation. But the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. All right, let's look at this. Up to this point in John, we've been introduced to Jesus Christ as the Word, as the one who was with God, as the one who was God, as the creator of all things, as the source of light and the source of life, as one to whom a man sent from God bore witness. We see him as the true light that comes into the world, as the one that comes into the world, as the one who made the world, as the one who is not known by the world or received by the Jews, as one who gives power to men to become the sons of God, 
as the one who made was made flesh and dwelt among us and the one whose fullness we receive and the one through whom grace and truth come <laughs> that's just what we've learned about Christ thus far in the first few verses of John it's a lot isn't it and you see it all pertains to salvation none of that pertains to life in the world none of it the associations of the Lord Jesus with God's Word God's person God's light God's life God's world the sons of God divine fullness grace and truth they're all pivotal matters that mean your life is hinged to these if you don't have these you can't have anything else all of this was in order that we might be saved that's how you got to see this now he says the only begotten son now, now we get into some real flaky stuff I'll give it to you in the various versions of Scripture. The, the only begotten Son. Now some of these are all right, like the one and only. The only Son. How about this? God, the only Son. That's the New Revised Standard. And God, the only Son. Only and unique Son. All right, that's the one and only Son. The English, stand, English Standard Version, begotten the only God. Good God's Word Bible says God's only Son, that's right. New American Bible says the only Son, comma, God. The only begotten God. Well, yeah, that's a Bible. At least it says it's a Bible. The only one himself, God. The unique one who is himself God. That's the New Living Translation. The unique God. The International Standard Version. The only Son, deity himself. Williams New Testament. The one of a kind expression. That's the message. Bible. The only unique Son or the only begotten God. That's the Amplified Bible. Now, one Greek manuscript. Well, it's not a manuscript. One Greek copy, edited in 1966, says the only begotten God. And there's another Greek manuscript that says the same thing. Now, I don't accept those translations myself. I'm going to affirm here that no God was never begotten in any sense. We have it now from Gabriel, who was from heaven. Right? Mm -hmm. He twice said this. Yeah. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. Yeah. Now, that had been a good place to say he should be called begotten God. I mean, that had been a good place to say it. And again, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, I don't know why the translators didn't check up on that. That's a word that came from heaven. And the thing that you've got to believe, the thing that saves you, is not believing that Jesus is God, although he is, yeah. that, but it's believing he's the Son of God. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's stated. Yeah. This is a statement of fact. Yes. He that believes Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh -huh. So... Uh, if I could meet the men there that translated that, I'd just rebuke them because it confused, mm -hmm. confuses things. The phrase, only begotten son, is a proper rendition. And those who think the other one is, has got, they've got to do a lot of fancy explaining to make it come out that way. But I say, just eliminate the walk-around path of explanation and just say it like it's intended to be said. The son of God. Mm -hmm. He's the only... Jesus is the only son God ever begat just like that. Amen. Now, this man has passed on. He's notable in the area for being a Bible scholar. He took the position that Jesus was not the only begotten son of God, that we're begotten of God too. 
He taught this, affirmed it strongly. I've had lengthy arguments with him about it. He's gone now. He, now he knows. Yes. I, it keeps coming back to me whenever God spoke to Abraham. And he's speaking of Isaac. He says, now, take your son, your only your son, only son yeah. Isaac. Mm -hmm. See, it, it, the, the, the promise was through the lineage of Isaac. Everybody else was a non-entity when it came to that. Adam was written off. He was the only begotten son. He was begotten. It, it, if it emphasizes that, that whenever he came into the world, it wasn't the same way as God had created man to begin mm -hmm. with. But yeah. it also speaks that there is no other son which he recognizes. That's right. Mm -hmm. That it is Christ. That's and, right. And everything else is a non. He's the a, son of God. That's exactly Amen. right. But mm -hmm. it's only as we are in him that we are sons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it really hearkens to both of those. And I was talking today to a close friend of mine about this subject because it was on my mind. And so I read him these other translations and I said, now, what do you think of those? And this is a seasoned Bible scholar. He said, well, it sounds all right to me. So we had another, we had a little lengthy discussion afterward. He said, I'll have to think about that. I hadn't thought about this. I said, well, see, I told him what I just told him. You can't be wrong about Jesus. I'm sorry, you can't be wrong. Mm -hmm. Not about the Son of God, because this is what's going to save you or damn you one or the other. Amen. It's going to be what think ye of Christ Amen. whose son? That's right. that what it says? Yeah. Whose son mm -hmm. is he? Now it's true that uh, those in Christ are begotten of God. 1 John 5 18 and 1 John 5 1 says that he that's begotten of God yeah. uh -huh. but the begetting isn't like Jesus that's begetting. Right. Now, James tells us how we're begotten. He says, of, of his, God's own will, begat he us with the word of truth. That was the gospel. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Well, see, that's not how Jesus... <laughs> Jesus wasn't begotten through the word of the gospel. He was begotten by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. Yes. The gospel of Paul is equated with the word of truth of James. The seed is the word of God. That's not what it was in the case of Jesus' birth. God has no other begotten like Jesus. He's the only begotten. You're begotten, but not like Jesus was. We have no replica of Jesus. There's not a replica of Jesus. See, we're going to be made like him, but we're not a replica of Jesus. We're the result of quite a lot of work. By God. By transformation. While Jesus, and Jesus, remember, is the express image of God. And it takes the whole church to be called the fullness of Christ, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the exact image of Christ is going to take the aggregate of all the saved of all ages. Who has any idea how many billions of people that is? That's what it's going to take to have a precise image of Christ. Now it says of him, he is... In the bosom of the Father. Yeah. Now, some of the other versions say he's at the Father's side. That's an NIV. Who is close to the, the Father's heart. That's a New Revised Standard Version. Who's on the breast of the Father. Basic Bible English. Who is identical with God and is at the Father's side. That's the Hebrew Jewish Bible. Who is... Oh, Here's the Living Bible. Get this. Who, who is the Father? 
That's what the living Bible says. In the arms of the Bible, International English, Amplified Bible says, who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence of the Father. See this? There are things, brethren, that the more you try and explain it, the more hazy it becomes. There are some things that defy human explanation. They're not meant to be explained. They're meant to be believed. That's what faith, the faith can believe something that can't be explained. Lord, that's good stuff. I don't mind telling you. <laughs> it's in the bosom of the Father. He is in the bosom of the Father. The point here is the oneness of the Father and the Son. He uses this language. The, the Son of God was in the bosom of Mary for a while. He, God doesn't have a bosom like Mary had, but what he's saying was he was in like in the purpose of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was a conception on earth was a purpose or objective in heaven, thought out by God himself. Now when Jesus came down to earth, he talked about this. Now here's a word that he said that fits right in with our text. He says, no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Yeah, yeah so that, that fact yeah. takes your thinking, huh? Yeah. That's what it says in the Greek. It's what it says, too. Yeah. 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 Came down from heaven and, not and shall soon be, uh -huh. is and yeah. is in heaven. That's the spiritual union between the Father and the Son. There is no variance between the Father and the Son. Jesus in no way modifies the Father. Amen. Yep. Yep. He reflects. Yes. It's a toned down reflection because it's through a, through a person, a, a human, a, well, a human being is not the right word, a man, through a man. Uh -huh. So it's, a, it's like a toned down mm -hmm. reflection, but it's the most potent reflection we can endure. It yeah. even changes us. We're changed uh -huh. by that image. Then again, Jesus said, I, I, my judgment is true, for I'm not alone, for I and the Father that sent me, I am not alone. He just, him and the Father were, he's in the bosom of the Father. The Father's in heaven, Father which art in heaven, he's in heaven, Jesus was on earth, but he was in the bosom of the Father. Now this oneness being in the bosom of the Father, Jesus sought that when he was, before he died, he was seeking to have what he had there, he was seeking to have that again. And he said to, as he prayed, now Father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That's the language of someone who's in the bosom of the Father. See, can, can you see that? <laughs> When the disciples murmured at one of his sayings, eat my flesh and drink my blood is a saying, he responded to them, what, what, what if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up, ascend up where he was before? Yeah. He's thinking, see, that's, uh -huh. that's bosom talk. That's, right. that's bosom talk. Amen. You're, you're stymied because you see me down here. Yeah. What are you going to do when you see me go back there? Just in the bosom talk. He's in the bosom of the Father. Peter said of Jesus, who has gone into heaven? He's at the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject to him. See, now the, that's the, that bosom talk is what that is. From this, this is not proximity talk. That's right. It, it, it's... Um, I just had my word and I just lost it there. Mm. There's uh, unity talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Get oneness talk. Oneness. Yeah. Mm. Now, from the standpoint of his affiliation with the Father and his fa the Father's love for him, it's bosom of the Father. From the standpoint of power and authority, 
he's exalted to the right hand of God. See, it's the same Christ, but it's like he's giving you two different views. What this verse is telling you is what God is to Jesus is infinitely more important than what he is to you. Because yeah, yes. what he is to you mm -hmm. depends critically uh -huh. upon what he is to the Father. Amen. If the Father is not pleased with him, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way he can be pleased with you. But we, of course, have the glad announcement. He is pleased. Amen. He is pleased with God. Yeah. So this same, uh, he is in the bosom of the Father. Paul adopted this kind of reasoning uh -huh. when he said to the Philippians, Philippians 1, 7, I have you in my heart. Yes, That's the same, That's right. the same type of thing. Yeah. There's some people that are in my heart. Uh -huh. yeah. You have people like this. Yes. It's, just, it's a special... Yes affinity that you don't have with everybody that doesn't condemn other people that's not what we're talking about we're talking about there's some people there's some people that they're down here and you're up here well you can't really be yeah. you're one with them but in another sense but they well, oh, that's up here i have none other like timothy whoa edward everybody like timothy see that was this in the bosom talk <clears throat> Christ starts dwelling in you yeah. by faith, and you'll start having these thoughts too. Heaven That's will right. start; it'll start glowing <laughs> more brightly, and Amen. it'll become a greater reality, even though it's been the same all along. But in you, it'll yeah. become a greater. That's reality. right. The day dawns. That's right. Amen. Now he says, "Now the Jesus we've just been talking about. See, yeah. He has declared Him, the Him being God." Now other versions, they, they tried to, they did pretty good on this. They said he's explained them. That's the New American Standard Bible. He's made him known. That's the NIV. He's made clear what God is, basic Bible English. He's revealed him, Holman Standard Bible. He's revealed God to us, New Living Translation. He's told us about him, Living Bible. He's unfolded his story. I don't know what they meant by there. It's international language. He interpreted him. That's Montgomery. That's, that's good. And he's one that described him. He's shown us what God's like. He's declared him. He's made him plain to us and so forth. So that's where what Jason introduced a few minutes ago. That's who we're at now. The secret of knowing God is not studying nature. Nature very limited in what they can tell you about God. And you mainly study the church. That's, that, that tops out too. Now first considering that, let's think of this reasonably first. Considering that Jesus does not ever duplicate what someone else has done. Are we all agreed on that? Then this necessarily means that there's no scholarly way to observe or come to the knowledge of God. Otherwise, Jesus would be duplicating what really could be done by somebody else. But it can't be done by anyone else. That's why, why he does it. His nature and objectives cannot be unfolded. God's nature and objectives cannot be unfolded by, say, apologetics or archaeology. He cannot be discovered by study in nature. He can't. Mm -hmm. If this is true, then we have Jesus doing something for us that can be really be done some other way. Well, yeah. And that's an untenable position. You, yeah. That can't be supported no way. Amen. Second, what, declare, what Jesus declares about God is essential to be, it's something that's essential. Yeah. Uh -huh. It has to be known. Otherwise, you have Jesus doing something that doesn't really need to be done. Yeah. And Jesus simply doesn't do anything that doesn't need to be done. Amen. Well, you say, well, how does he declare him? All right. When Jesus was among men, went about doing good, he and all that were oppressed to the devil, he said a number of things about God. All right. I'm going to give you a sampling of them here. God had delivered all things to him. There's no way you could know this otherwise. Only the Father knew who Jesus was. God reveals who Jesus is. He told them some things. Jesus told them some things God would do. God determines the places of honor, Jesus said. 
God appointed Jesus a kingdom, he told. Jesus said God's a worker. Jesus said God gives the true bread to men. Jesus said he, God's identif he's, he identifies some things God wills. God honors Jesus, Jesus said. God commanded Jesus to lay down his life, take it up again. God and Jesus are one or perfectly united. He identified whom God especially loves. Jesus did. The person in whom God will make his abode, he identified that part, that. God is a husbandman of the vineyard of Christ's people. God will remove from Jesus anyone who bears, fails to bear fruit. God prunes every person who bears fruit in order that they might bear more fruit. God gives good gifts to his children. God gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. These are things now that God said, Jesus said about God. God is sealed or sanctioned, Jesus. Whatever is asked the Father in Jesus' name, he will give it. God will forgive us our trespasses and we will forgive those who trespass against us. God sends the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. God shows Jesus what he's going to do. The Father dwelt in Jesus and did the works he was doing. Jesus did what he saw the Father doing. God gave Jesus some works to finish. God gave some people to Jesus. See, that's just 28 off the top of the head things. One can only imagine now, after he went back to heaven, what he's making known. What's going to be made known when we get there on the other side, see? He, Jesus is the expositor of God. The closer you get to Jesus, the more enthralled you get with Jesus. The more you walk with Jesus, you, become, you begin to become an expert on God. Believe me, people say God never, God always. People that say that generally know very little about God. But you'll be able to be a spokesman for God. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's, that's not good what you're doing there. God, does, God doesn't approve of that. Yeah. Or that's, oh, you did well there. God will recognize that. He's not unrighteous to forget your work of faith and labor of love. Yeah. So you could be an ex expert to, to, in a major, mm -hmm. to your major. Yeah. Paul was an expert in God. Mm -hmm. Look well things he told us about God. Amen. Well, he got it from Jesus. Jesus is the one that unveiled all this about God. So it, go, it goes without saying that Jesus won't show you something about God that's not in the Scripture. Because this is what confirms that what you know is legitimate. If it can't be found in the Scripture, then you just, you better, you better not major on it to say the least, and you better preferable to drop it. Oh, amen. Mm. There they was testify of me. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, the, mm. the scriptorians of the day had completely missed that. Uh huh, yeah. Because he said, You will not come to me. Yeah. Which yeah. means they didn't, they didn't catch what the scriptures yeah. were actually mm -hmm. saying. Now, the exalted Christ is presently mm. teaching people mm -hmm. not how to live. Yeah. I mean, come on, folk. Moses can tell you how to live. Yeah. If you have to be taught how to live, you got some like a major obstacle. Mm -hmm. What Jesus is teaching you about God. Now, here we know this by what Paul said to the Ephesians who never heard Jesus when he was on earth. Jesus never went over to Asia. But they were never exposed personally mm -hmm. to personal teaching of Jesus. But here's what he said. He said, But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Was that, see, I'm, I'm rejoiced that that doesn't sound strange to me anymore. I can remember when, like, oh, I wonder what that means. That means just exactly what it says. Yeah, amen. And when you come to see that you've experienced that, mm -hmm. and there's there's measures of it. Understand, there's measures of it. You you may have like a a cup full, yeah. uh -huh. 
This is like a gigantic warehouse. Well, you may have a cup full. That cup will do more for you than the accumulated wisdom of humanity. Amen. Treasure whatever you know about God. That whatever you know for sure, you know it and you know you know it. One person would say, I know that I know that I know. They say, if this is true, you place a premium on that. Don't let anybody take that from you. Then John, he, he elaborated on 1 John 5.20. He says, we know the Son of God is come. Some versions say has come. What it means is he, he is come means he has come to stay. Yeah. You know, that, that's what is, that's why it says is come. He went, when we receive Christ, as many as received him, do they give he the power to become the sons of God? When you receive Christ, he aims to come and stay. He's not like a visitor. We know the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. And what? Given us an understanding. Understanding of what? That they might know thee, the only true God. See? That we may, and then he tells you what it is, that we may know him that is true. That's the understanding he's given you. He's given you to understand God. Now tell me that's not challenging. But if nobody but Jesus could give you come up something like this. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This, this God that Jesus is teaching us about, this is the true God and eternal life. And the next verse says, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from a a form of Christianity, for want of a better term, that leaves you not knowing God. Yeah, yeah. That's an idol. Mm -hmm. Whatever it's being preached, that's an idol. Yeah. Uh -huh. The real Jesus will give you, the longer you're in Christ, this never, I can tell you that up to near 80, it doesn't stop. I know, firsthand. I know other people went well past 80 and they testified it never it never stops. You keep on seeing more and more and more and more and more because Jesus is the one teaching it. Yeah. He's the expositor. Mm -hmm. He knows. Now, this is true, brethren. He knows that if you can see enough of God, you'll never get off the boat. Amen. He knows that if you can see the truth of these things that sound in the gospel, if it dawns on, if the day dawns, that secures you. Because it changes your appetite, it changes your objective, it changes why you do things and where you go and what you say and what you do. It changes all of that. And I feel for people that go to churches where they don't hear much of this. Because unless they found some resource, some resource someplace else, they're like bottlenecked. For some people, going to church is the biggest obstacle in their life. It is, I'm telling you the truth. That's why Jesus, uh, God appointed Jesus to it, show us what God really is because no one else, all people could tell you, Abraham could did tell you what he, what he saw, yeah. what God told him. That's all. That's all Paul could tell you, what was told him. But everything's been told to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus knows everything about God. And there's no known terminal point to what you could know about God in right now in this world. There's no known terminal point. You throw your it takes your it takes devotion now. And you'll you'll come across looking kind of weird to a lot of people. But if you devote yourself to this, whatever makes it hard for you to hear this teaching, this is something you have to do this. Nobody, nobody can sit in judgment on you on this matter. We all just are responsible for ourselves. Whatever makes it difficult for you to pick up on what Jesus is saying, you got to get away from that thing. Yeah, amen. You, and no one can tell you how to do it or dictate it to you. You got to do it yourself. That's one of the purposes of our gatherings, mm -hmm. and we're we're growing in this. We're well, we're not there yet, 
but it's to sharpen people's sensitivity. To make their their more conscious of the real issues of life and death, and of the real uh, things that can be obtained in Christ Jesus. That's what. I, that's why we're meeting. We're just me not meeting to fill up time. Yeah, that's, right. that's not why we're meeting. That's right. Because we know that that's the thing that'll. If you have a difficulty living for Christ, that's the thing that'll mm -hmm. turn the tide for you. Yeah. And in the meantime, while you're learning. While you're learning, he'll keep you from falling. Yes, amen. Hmm? And he make you stand. Amen. And when you like, some of us maybe have faced challenges that we haven't faced before, and you kind of feel unequal to it, you know. But don't leave Christ out of the scenario. Amen. You've done the best you can. The storm's still raging, all right? <laughs> the storm's still raging. You've done the best you can. Yeah. He'll keep you from falling. Amen. Now, I, this is secondhand. I heard another man say it, but it, it so touched me. I'm going to tell it to you. When the ship breaks up and you got to get to shore, yeah. Yeah. all you can go on is what's left. So there's some things trials can't take away from you. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Those are like a chunk of the boat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Grab a hold of it and head for shore. See, it's a great truth if you can see it. Yeah. The great truth. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll be able to make it because of the role of Christ. See, Christ is what underwrites this whole thing. Amen. All right, I'll close there. Any of you have something you'd like to add? Something more? There was a time when Paul could have had a lot of things to complain about there. <laughs> I mean, look at how everything's working out, Lord. Here. But yeah, he, did, he, he, he believed and, and yeah. he comforted everyone that was with him. Yeah, and, and they were all saved because, because of him. So, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes we come to the assembly and... Um, we, we, we gain because somebody else is yeah. running the race and they're going strong. We can gain from that just by being Amen. in the proximity of them. Amen. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sister Billis. Um, I thank you for this lesson. I have a better grasp on eternal life now. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially when you were talking about uh, treasure, what you know. And, and this caused me to think more on it because what you know... What you really know yeah. is what keeps you, and this That's is eternal right. life. This That's is the right. kind of knowing. It's not like I know this scripture, mm -hmm. you know, I can quote this scripture or whatever. But the things you know that you've experienced through your life and your walk of faith, yeah. mm -hmm. and you've grown in, these things is what keeps you, and this is eternal life. It's like the blood pumping in you. That's yes, right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, Amen. he has with adjusted. It's like, it's just really refreshing to be able to say, lay hold on knowing lay God. Yeah. That's right. That's eternal life. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. Jason. Yeah, I had a thought back in the section, the only begotten which is in the bosom of the Father. Mm -hmm. if, if he is in the bosom of the Father, Mm -hmm. There's a sense in which he can take you there that's too. Right, yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. That's why that's that's why that's stated there. I, I don't yeah. think that I don't think that's stated there just like a like a theological technical dogma. point. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You're the right. Good, the good news is is that because he's from the bosom of the Father, yeah. he can take you there. That's right. Bring us to God. Bring that's right. God. Yeah. That's right. That we're in Christ. There's a sense in which we're where he is. That's right. Amen. And there is a, there is a sense. He already talked about this, but. But the only begotten Son. Now we're not begotten like He is, but we are begotten. We are like begotten. Like uh -huh. That's so, right. And that's only possible in Christ. That's, that's right. right. We're legitimate sons. We're not bastards. Amen. That's right. Now we're not bastards. We're legitimate sons now. That's uh -huh. That's why He came is to make us sons. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. And G from Jesus' perspective, we're His children. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. One of the reasons why there's so much heart in the, the knowledge of the scriptures is because we actually gain an entrance into these things ourselves. Yes. Uh, it, it, we're not learning about something external to ourselves. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're knowing things that we ourselves mm -hmm. are tasting and experiencing yeah. and owning, if you will. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Concerning what Jason just said there, there I, there's a sense in which you can have a awareness of a bosom surrounding. Yes. Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah. You can be sur- Yeah. This is a, this, mm-hmm. this is a great truth. Yeah. You can. Our lives are hid with Christ in God. There it is. There it is. That's the same thing right there, isn't it? Our lives are hid with Christ in God who's in the bosom of the Father. Well, I didn't mean to unload such a bushel load of good news on you. Now that phrase, the Father, is mentioned over 70 times in John's Gospel. I know. Yeah. That, that is such a significant thing to see. Amen. Because it's... God being a father wasn't a brand new concept because he was a father to Israel. That's right. But provisionally he was a father, yeah. not by nature. That's yeah. right. They were not That's like right. God in that sense. You see, mm-hmm. that is what Jesus came to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Is to bring about the knowledge of God as father. Mm-hmm. And now through Jesus, we are being made partakers of the divine That's nature. Right. That's right. That's the whole point of John uh-huh. 17, of being one. Mm-hmm. So that, the, that is we may be the sons of God yeah. without rebuke. That's right. Amen. But Amen. apart from uh-huh. Jesus, that cannot happen he because he's else. preeminently the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, yes, well, Justin. I, I want to be right about when I say things about the Lord. It's like if somebody, if somebody that you knew started going around and saying stuff about you that wasn't uh, right. Oh, that's right. Like, oh, he, he likes this kind of chocolate, and he likes this kind of food, and he prefers this, and did you know he said this about this person? And, and if it wasn't true, uh-huh. that's be, right. I don't know anyone that wouldn't be angry about that. That'd be, uh-huh. that'd be what the Bible calls railing. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I Honestly, I can't think of anybody that would, would not be upset about that. Mm-hmm. So... And in, if you take that in the context of that person is just yeah. a man, yeah, and God is God. That's right. But if you properly represent yeah. God, oh, God has an attitude toward that too. Right. Right. <laughs> yes, brother Jason. Yeah, you started out by talking about being right about God. Mm-hmm. I think being right about God also involves being right with God. Oh, amen. Uh, yeah. so amen. It's, and the reason why I say that is because, first of all, n- nobody gets born again with, like, all the information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, we do grow in our knowledge Oh, yes, of God. amen. Mm-hmm. And secondly, this knowing God does not mean you memorize the Apostles' Creed and you can recite it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not, it, that's not what, that's not it. No. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know... You've got to be. You've got to be in agement with God. That's mm-hmm. that's what Jesus does for us. Yeah, that's right. Now, I don't reconciliation. Think, yes, I don't think a person who is in agreement with God mm-hmm. is going to end up wrong about God. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're now, right. you, you may you may have to learn, and you mm-hmm. may have to unlearn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. But you're going to end up if you're right with God. You're going to end up yeah. in mm-hmm. the right place, even even though you're. Your knowledge may be min- relatively minuscule, but when you're right about knowing God, you're right. That brings God into the mm-hmm. scenario. Right. We have the example of Abraham. Mm-hmm. He yeah. believed God. Yeah. He didn't have all the information. Yeah. He he kind yeah. of went the, the wrong route on it as as far as the, from the end's perspective. But God didn't charge him with folly because he believed God. Amen. Everything he did was dictated Amen. by faith in God. Mm-hmm. And he he wound up in the right place. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, it did. Abraham might have not been technically, in a way, correct about his own situation, what God would do with his son. But because he reasoned by faith, yeah. It gave insight into what God would do yeah, that's with right. his own that's son right. and raising him from the dead. Yeah, amen. See, that can be cited at before the birth of Isaac. They didn't know exactly how this was yeah. going to come about, but they did what they did uh-huh. according to the promise. And then uh, going to the Mount of Moriah, he he just figured God would, would take those ashes and, <laughs> and just bring Isaac back. Yeah. And that was wrong also. Yeah. But he did the right thing because what was revealed... He was yeah. proceeding on that. But he reasoned with something only God could do. That's right. Yeah. That's a good parallel. 
Jesus is to God what Isaac was to Abraham. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, let's hit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Sister Betty. There have been many who have tried to come to God uh, other than through Christ. Oh, yes. Yeah. And this is not an innocent thing at all. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they will admit it or not, they're, they're trying to come up another way because they've rejected Christ. Mm -hmm. And they've rejected the way that God has made mm -hmm. for men to come to Him. Mm -hmm. And the, but Christ is the only way. Amen. So if mm -hmm. they reject that way, there is no other way to come good. to God. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta try to get over the wall. Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. Our Heavenly Father, we're we're grateful for this revelation. The revelation Jesus Christ has given of you. And it means very much to us. We feel like Peter when he said, Evermore give us this bread. We find great delight in the process of learning. Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.